In Pennsylvania, there lies an abandoned quarry known as the Seven Stars Fossil Site, which was once a shallow sea, teeming with marine life. The fossil deposits date back to the Middle Devonian period about 387 to 385 million years ago, and have revealed at least 42 known organisms. Around 387 to 385 million years ago, seasonal storms covered the area in silica-based sediments. This created an ideal environment for some of the remains to stay preserved in the rocks, providing us a glimpse into this once thriving ecosystem. Most of these species would soon become extinct in an event known as the Tekanic Crisis. This was a time when environmental upheavals cast a dark shadow over the marine world, causing the extinction of species such as Stereolasma rectum, whose fossils have not been found after the crisis. Pluriodictum americanum was a tabulate coral forming medium-sized colonies. Unlike modern sclerotinian corals, they did not usually compose the majority of reef, though they were likely members of it. In contrast, Stereolasma rectum was a solitary rugose coral that often lived solitary lives attached to the sea bottom. Tabulate and rugose corals were the only types of corals found at the Seven Stars fossil site. Both types became extinct during the late Permian mass extinction. Eutactotecus was a branching bryozoan that was uncommon in this area. They are a phylum of simple aquatic invertebrate animals that spend their lives in sedentary colonies. Raptaria was an encrusting hadaloroid. This colony has found a way to roam the shallow Devonian seas, as they have been discovered on the backs of straight-shelled cephalopods. Hyolotids had elegantly curving horns, known as helans. The horns were used to lift their bodies into the current, allowing them to feed more conveniently on plankton from the surrounding water. Tentaculites filtered plankton with a tentacled organ called lophophore. While tentaculitids have been classified as mollusks, worms and other phyla, their classification is still not completely resolved. Most evidence points to a lopophorid affinity, being most closely related to modern phonorid worms. Remarkably, one of the only species found here was almost 10 times the size of its relatives from similar sites. Brachiopods, once abundant residents of prehistoric oceans, left behind a rich legacy of fossils here at Seven Stars. Today, however, only a handful of brachiopod species persist. Different brachiopod species display distinct preferences for specific water depths. By examining their fossilized remains within ancient rock layers, geologists can unravel clues about the depth and character of long-lost marine environments.
Brachiopods with their diverse forms, specific ecological preferences and well-preserved fossil record are invaluable tools for geologists in understanding the age, environment and history of ancient marine ecosystems. Their use in stratigraphy continues to contribute to our understanding of the Earth's past. Some gastropods were very common residents of seven stars. They were an important part of the ecosystem, grazing on detritus and possibly being an important prey for carnivorous organisms. Tomatus is the largest gastropod at seven stars. The shell of adults flares to the sides and back. This strange looking mollusk belongs to the class Monoplacophora, a name derived from the Greek meaning bearing one plate. True to its name, the Monoplacophora has a single untorted shell that distinguishes it from other mollusks. These creatures are considered living fossils, as they were thought to be extinct for over 350 million years, until their rediscovery in the deep seas in 1952. Four types of cephalopods lived at this site, all occupying slightly different ecological niches. The placoderms would go on to become dominant predators in the late Devonian, but in the early and middle Devonian they still suffered fierce competition from cephalopods in isolated marine basins, such as the Appalachian. 
all the phony encephalopods were united in having a phragma cone, which is a chambered gas-filled shell that allowed them to alter their buoyancy in water to save energy. Cephalopod fossils sometimes contain traces of the vibrant patterns and colors they once had. Some cephalopods had intricate color patterns on their shells, while the soft tissues that created these color patterns rarely stay preserved. Crinoids belong to the phylum Achinodermata, the same group that includes starfish and sea urchins. Here at Seven Star site, two types of crinoids have been discovered, together with many fragments of unidentified species. Both types were part of the subclass Cladida that later gave rise to the sea lilies and feather stars that still roam the oceans today. While for a long time it was thought that some gastropods fed on the waste that crinoids excreted, it has more recently been suggested that the relationship between the two was more of parasitic nature. Polychaetes are segmented worms that have distinctive paired appendages. They first appeared in the Cambrian period and have a rich fossil record. Unicids are a specific type of polychaete, common in today's oceans, and have a diverse fossil record, with twice as many known fossil species compared to the living ones. The only cue of unicid presence at the site is the existence of rounded straighted burrows. Trilobites were atropods that thrived throughout the Paleozoic era, with over 17,000 known species, they were among the most successful early life forms. At this site, four species of trilobites have been identified. Eldrageops was a species of trilobite that was more common at sites with fewer large fast swimming cephalopods. Here at Seven Stars, only a couple of fragments of this species have been found, suggesting it was likely a very rare species in this area. The pleura fossils were discovered with pored shells. The pores may have been attachment sites for sensory hairs and are concentrated on the cephalon and the phygidium. Like their modern atropod relatives, Trilobites grew by molting their exoskeletons. Here you can observe the entire molting process sped up. Greenops putai can be distinguished from Greenops grabawi by its longer, less curved phygidial spines and slightly longer genal spines. For a long time, conodonts remained a mystery. Their teeth, which were discovered from the Cambrian to the Triassic periods, left scientists puzzled about the organisms they belonged to. The mystery was finally resolved with the discovery of an eel-like fossil in Scotland. This revealed that the mysterious teeth were actually part of a specialized internal feeding apparatus.
Placoderms were among the first jawed fish, known for their heavy armor. Here at seven stars, a fin spine, a bone fragment and other potential remains of Placoderms have been found that were likely from the species Botryolepis canadensis. Hey, this video was brought to you by Paleobiome. My name is Kai and I'm a biology student from the Netherlands. I just helped out with the script writing and the narration of this video. If you're interested in learning more about Asian life forms, check out my channel Echoes of Evolution. Here I offer detailed video essays on prehistoric life together with animations from Paleobio. The reconstructions of the animals included in this biome were made in collaboration with bringing fossils to life. The insights gained from this collaboration have increased the simulator's realism and also provided valuable lessons that will continue to benefit the simulator's development in the future. The Bringing Fossils to Life website is presenting the seven stars in such a user-friendly way and organized for those who want to know more about these organisms and keep up to date with the latest finds. All major groups, like for example the brachiopods, have detailed explanations and reconstructions that are easy to distinguish when fossil hunting. Photos of real fossils make identification easier. Want to know more? Visit bringingfossilstolife.infinityfreeapp.com